Hello everybody, Prince Hello. of the Bear here and we're back at Hollywood Studios because you know we love this park. And uh, we're gonna eat at the Brown Derby. Yes, you it's guys been have been asking us for the better a part of a year. Time. You've been asking us for a while. And we've been delaying this. Uh, it's my fault. Hard. 100% I take responsibility for the fact that you've been asking and I have not been obliging. So here we are acquiescing to your request. Yes. So let's so, go uh, get our derby on. Be sure to go to the real Hollywood and enjoy actual Hollywood. You heard the girl. And subscribe. Californians. I got the pomegranate whiskey sour. Now on the menu it comes with Crown Royal, but Crown is not vegan, so I switched the Crown for Jameson because it is the superior whiskey anyway. Always go with the Irish whiskey. Yeah, it tastes. I'm sure the Crown is lovely, but I don't want gelatin in my drink. This is a million times better than a Crown drink would be. I would give it a four out of five pomegranates. It's gonna taste even better squeezing this lime in it, but I'm not doing that because Bear doesn't like that. We'll do it after. Princess just says to out me, I have a sustained problem with fruit cocktail in my whiskey cocktails. I will make an exception for some stellar drinks, like smoked turkey for instance. But in most cases, if you put cock fruit in my whiskey drink, I'm probably gonna feel some kind of way. I might not say anything, but inside, I'm a grumpy dude. I'm curious about this one. You can always usually switch out some of your drinks with like your alcohols and, and cocktails. The bartenders don't mind. Always be, don't be afraid to ask if you want something different. That's actually quite good. It's like a superior version of like a vodka cranberry but with whiskey. I want to recreate this at home now. Four and a half out of five claws. The lime is acceptable, it gets a pass. The peach tree punch with Grey Goose and schnapps, peach schnapps. It doesn't taste that peachy. I don't know, it's kind of watered down. Like a light juice. I will give it like a three, two and a half out of five fruits. Let it be known there was a more brown derby themed cocktail that I was considering getting, but when I saw the fact that they had a glow cube, I had to put a foot down. So I went to Peachtree Punch. I was definitely not expecting something tall, something like a short cocktail, but it's punchy, so I suppose it makes sense. This, this though, that's unacceptable. Even in a punch. Well, for something the name punch, I was expecting a more punchy peach flavor. It definitely tastes like a peach flavored Hawaiian punch. You can't really taste the alcohol. It's not bad. But I think I definitely prefer the princess's drink to mine. Three out of five plus. We have some beautiful bread that is vegan, and then we got some lovely earth balance butter with some Himalayan salt. I'm here for this Himalayan salt. Nice and melty, it's not like um, hard or cold. I love it, I love the touches. I appreciate the fact that it was even offered to me in the first place. I'm just gonna rip it off and just eat it like a bear. It's a standard dinner roll. It's very good. I put way too much butter on it, but it's not the bread's fault. The salt is a really nice touch. I like it. This bread, I feel like, is always consistent, never changes. And for that, I'm gonna give it a four out of five breads. It really um, is 
on a roll. We love a nice pre-dinner roll. It's got a nice crust on it. Nice and flaky and warm. Now, I'd love and delight when the princess can get earth balance. Because I'm lactose intolerant. And I don't really like butter all that much anyway. So, I don't even really see a need to try the regular butter. Because earth balance is literally so much like butter. With a nice healthy dose of the earth balance. Give it a bite. There is an afterlife. They will have bread like this. Four and a half out of five plus. I have this beautiful strawberry salad that has like candy pecans on it. I got spinach and mixed greens. All of the healthy things. The most the reason I was the most excited for this salad is because there's like a cashew cheese on it and I love cashew cheese. This is a big bite though. Oh yeah. I love... I love the sweetness of the strawberry balanced with the lettuce leaf. It's very good. And then you have like the candied nuts which is just like a nice little sweetness to come in with it. There's also like a tinge with the vinaigrette that gives you like that tang that you're kind of looking for to balance out the sweetness and the, like the acidity too. So overall, I would say it's like above average salad, but I don't think I would proactively come here just to eat this. I'm gonna give it a three out of five salads. You could probably get Similar salad complex. Here we have this strawberry filled green salad. Strawberry filled green is one of those weird salads that you get. It has a lot of different things in it, the strawberries and then the savory items, candy pecans. Even if you have a problem with textures, so I know a lot of people do, and there's nothing wrong with that. I always suggest if you've never had one of these salads or something in a similar vein, you at least give it a shot. Because there's some of my favorite salads you can get. And I'm a bear, but I love rabbit food. Normally cheese on salads, such like a non-starter for me. It doesn't usually add a whole lot unless you're with a pop salad or something like that. With the cashew cheese, it's a nice touch. It sort of balances out the tartness of the vinaigrette. You get the sweetness of the strawberries and then the candy pecans in there. It's an A-plus salad. A little bit more above average to me. I'm going to give that a 4 out of 5 points. I would definitely eat this and not miss my appetizer in the slightest. Now, every now and again, as a bear, i got to return to my roots. I like seafood. I'm an island bear. You give me seafood, in any shape or form, sometimes even fried, I will eat it. So when you tell me that I'm gonna have scallops and pork belly on one plate, it's kinda hard for me to turn down. And the waitress recommended it. No, you never turn down a waitress recommendation. Don't be like me, which I have done and instantly regretted it many times. With these nice thick slices of pork belly. It's cooked in a traditional way, double cut, and then a huge, huge scallop. You're always worried about that when you order scallops, you're getting like those tiny baby scallops. Because that is not worth the cost of admission. You have the sauces, you have the pork belly. Nice pork full of both the uh, land and the sea there. It's like an air show, but prettier. Mm. Pork belly. And scabs wouldn't be my first choices of two sort of like protein to throw together. That tomato jam on both really sort of brings all of them together. That's a nice appetizer. It's definitely not something that the level of appetizers I would order is like a tapas to like a small snack. But as far as like a treat yourself, this is definitely that and far an appetizer. Look at that, four out of five plus. Tomato risotto 
I believe we have little falafel balls in here too. We got some toppings. I see some capers. I see some squash. I see some tomatoes. I'm gonna get some risotto from the bottom here. The interesting thing about this um, risotto is that it is plant-based, as is, and the, the cast members are not allowed to add meat to it. But it's not marked as plant-based on the menu, which is weird. So, um, the waitress did say she was gonna let them know so that they could get that updated, but so you guys know, even on the allergy menu, it says there's no dairy, there's no egg, none of that. So, cheers to risotto, vegan. It's very creamy. I'm at home. I've done like a tomato sausage risotto. Like, you know, sausage. And my tomato is a little bit more prominent. This is almost like a, a nice creamy roasted tomato, and I really like this more. This is very inspiring for homemade risottos, especially with capers. And I am really curious, like, what is this? Is this a Falafel? It looks like a falafel to me. Does it look like a falafel to you? I'm just gonna bear eat it instead of princess eat it. Mm. It's actually like seasoned bread, which pairs nicely with this. And the capers. I got extra bread because I thought I was gonna need the bread with the risotto, but I don't think I'm going to. I think this risotto is really gonna stand out on its own. Um, usually when I get like a pasta or risotto or something, I end up eating a small amount here. I'm taking the rest of the home so that I can like zhuzh it up and make it a little more tasty. I'm not gonna have to do that with this dish. This dish is perfect the way that it is. I'm gonna give it a four and a half out of five tomato risottos. I'm glad that I put off not coming for the mushroom risotto so that I could try the tomato risotto because I really think that I will like this one more. I mean, I'm not a mushroom person anyway, so. Tomatoes are my jam. This is my jam. This was worth the over the year wait, for me at least, going from the impossible Salisbury to this. Thank you, Browner. I'll admit, given, uh, what we've seen from the plant-based items here before, I was expecting something extremely boring. Like literally just a lump of risotto on a flat plate with a couple tomatoes on top and call it a day. This is like a garden spread on top of a risotto. And a nice like little themed, I don't know what you'd call this, 10? Oven dish? Somebody more culinary attuned to probably tell me what it is. Either way, I'm impressed. Just the way it looks. You know, you have like all sorts of herbs. You're one of those vegans that likes to avoid all meats. This might be the dish for you. It just looks alone. Flavor, however, is another thing altogether. Let's get some tomatoes, the capers. Let's spear one of these peppers here. A little bit more tomato. Oh, well, more little red peppers. I can't pass up the spicy. Here we go on the end. Let's get a full tomato risotto bite. That's very interesting. The peppers, the capers. Little red peppers. With risotto. It almost makes you feel guilty how creamy it is. I'm glad that we asked several times about it being plant-based because honestly, without the label, if you give this to somebody and told them there was no sort of dairy in it, I might have questioned that. But it is legitimately that creamy without any sort of hands of any sort of like fake plant-based favorite or anything else. And it's really tasty. Now, we have had very many like hit and miss visits to this restaurant. The point was the reason why we avoided coming back for so long. I can only say, I think we waited too long. This is a solid four out of five flaws. I would eat this on the regular. 
Our risotto from now on needs all the spread of the house. Cheese and bread, the capers. Or again, I'll put capers in anything. But I do legitimately like this dish. I think it's a vast improvement of the things we've seen here in the past. Good job. I just realized that these are the eggplant fritters. I have never seen a fritter in the shape of like an ice cream scoop before. Usually when I eat a fritter, it's flat. Like a pancake, like flat, flat. You tell me in the comments, have you ever seen a fritter like this before? Or like, how do you usually eat your fritters? So, I have come here before and I've gotten a filet of beef. Uh, we've tried pho. I have tried uh, their previous chicken dish here, but I have oddly never had fish on camera here before. Uh, so I decided to get their sustainable salmon dish. They have a sustainable fish. Here the game is rainbow trout, but then they actually have the salmon as well. It seems to be something to be more prepared and regular. Now it's served on a bit of rice and a sea of sauce with this waffled bread crisp on top. Some mushrooms and some greens on it. Let me just go ahead and tip this right off the top here. We don't need that right away. Put a nice huge chunk of salmon, nice color on it, nice spinach, little niki mushrooms on top of the rice. I want all of that, all of that in a bite. Salmon's got a beautiful color. Salmon, uh, the spinach is a bit thick. I guess I can do that a little bit more chopped up. The beggars can't be choosers. That initial bite is a very um, ocean-centric flavor for salmon. Just not a bad thing, salmon is like that. Um, a lot of people like some citrus to sort of cut through that. If you don't like very like ocean flavored salmon, this might be a problem for you. Um, is it a very strong flavor? Even with the spinach, I can't taste spinach at all. All I taste is fish. Um, the sauce is okay. It's a nice balance. It tastes it by itself. It's a very interesting sort of like. That's an avocado cream? How do I feel about that? Let me get one more bite. So a bit of this bread crisp. Salmon. And the spinach. Mm. Be a bit more civilized. So we have a knife here, okay? We can figure this out together. Or everything just falls apart. Either way, it's all going in the same place. Here's one of those dishes. It's odd to me. Nothing, there's nothing to me technically wrong with this dish. The salmon is well seasoned and flaky, cooked perfectly all the way through. I love how sauteed the spinach is. The rice is good, perfectly cooked. The sauce is tasty on its own. Even a little bread crisps. It has a little texture to it. It's cooked with nice presentation. All together though, they ain't working. The rice of the fish does nothing for me. You can't even really taste the rice. The sauce doesn't really seem to complement the salmon very well. And the bread, while good, doesn't really seem to have any purpose other than just look pretty on top of the salmon. Which is a disappointment. Uh, the flavors, they're just not, they're, they're not the Fab Five, put it that way. It's like Kmart knockoff. It's not a bad dish, technically. It's just not great. I wouldn't recommend this dish to anybody but a hardcore fish lover. I'm giving it two and a half out of five plus. <laughs> you are a hardcore fish lover, though. And I don't love it. Brown Derby pulled out some surprises in the end. 
I really appreciate the service. We always have amazing service here. Our favorite bartender is Ron at the Brown Derby Lounge. I always check him out if you are here. Um, so yeah, cast member wise, they never let us down. They lost our reservation. They couldn't find it. They still got us seated within like 15 minutes, which was very good. fast. Very good. And um, even though, you know, the things weren't mentioned, like listed as plant-based, you know, our waitress said she was going to get that added. Very knowledgeable, it covered everything, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was overall, it was a pleasant experience. Even though Bear and I are not really fans of Brown Derby, I think for myself personally, coming to this restaurant... It'll be a lot easier to convince me to come back next time. Coming to this restaurant for me is like a little piece of home. It feels very much like a lot of restaurants that I've been to in Los Angeles. But most of those places are like, you know, dive restaurants or old, super old restaurants. They're not signature dining like it is here. So I don't know, the high quality just kind of throws me a little bit. I feel like that's why I'm not as into Brown Derby as I should be. But like, they've really never let us down. There's no reason to not like Brown Derby. I mean, if you're gonna eat anywhere else here, eat at Sci-Fi. Even still, it's not a bad is hard place. To get into. It's hard, sci-fi is hard to get into. You can but there's a reason why. Here. There's a reason why Sci-Fi is so hard to get into. But I want to know your thoughts. When was the last time you guys considered coming to Brown Derby, and what's keeping you from eating here? Let us know in the comments below. If there's any reason you think more people should come here, I want to hear that too. Also, if there's some place else you like to go, that's always in the place to find us. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week: Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. I'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the bell. I like this video, and if you don't comment, I'm pretty sure Bear is just going to eat himself into the unknown. I'm not singing, but you heard the girl. Hello. 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 Hello.